from the bottom of the heart i want to welcome to all of you friends today we are going to launch we are going to study very important poems in titles a psalm of life by hindi words what long fellow friends before to discussing about the points in brief i tell you about the writers hindi words what long fellow 1807 to 1882 is one of the americans best loved poets and a prima, prominent member of the group of written called fireside poets he is known as the fireside poets which included william cullen bryant john greenleaf wit tears james russell lowell and oliver wendell holmes etc this poems because of their easy receptability are still prescribed in schools and used to be read aloud in american homes around the household heart of fire hence their name fireside poets <clears throat> The popular appeal of Longfellow's poetry is mainly due to the natural grace and beauty of his verse and also because of the simple themes the spirit of joy optimism and faith in the goodness of life that is so characteristic of his poetry when we talk about the poems a psalm of life The following poem was written during his year in Cambridge. Machistis after Longfellow had completed a number of lectures on John Wolfgang von Goethe the German writers. Elflo stayed with Longfellow as he discussed the writer as well as his life with a friend Karl Feltz. During the course of their discussion They talked of matters relating to difficult times that are encountered in life and about having positive attitudes that will support us during such times and ma- matters related to the soul. This dialogue resulted in the lyric A Psalm of Life written in October 1938. The present poems A Psalm of Life depicts the narrator's perspective on the value of life and what virtues we should incorporate to live every day meaningfully purposefully with ambitions aim goal and the purpose not as a absurd the psalm is a word which religious connotations and a psalm of life series reads like a prayer of hope prayer of joy and optimism a spiritual receipt for living our lives the light of stars a poem which which longfellow called a second psalm of life was written letters a psalm of life consists of nine quatrains quatrains means quatrains is called having four lines or four line stanzas and all of which underline his optimism and courage and that is the main theme of the poem the title psalm the psalm means it is a sacred song a hymn which is prayers or it is also called a prayer to god a song or hymn in praise of god in praise of god so it is a sacred song or hymn <coughs> and uh, longfellow has indeed penned this poem in the tradition of religious verse with the same spiritual fervor however it is a very practical psalm 
the aim of which is to enlighten young readers, the youth, on the best way to lead their life. The poet urges the readers to not think of life as a waste because of its transiency. <laughs> life and uh, life is momentary, transient. We can't give the guarantee of it when we are going to leave this stage. So it is a transiency, but make sure to defeat death by filling it with the activities to the fullest. He asks the readers to discard the past and the future and focus on the cultivating the present and the nourishing the soul in order to reach the pinnacle of self-development, self-esteem and uh, self-confidence. <clears throat> now actually, I started uh, to read the poems. I read line by line and try to explain. <clears throat> the first stanza. Tell me not in mournful numbers, life is but an empty dream. For the soul is dead that slumbers and things are not what they seem. See, tell me. The poet says, tell me, in mournful numbers, mournful, expressing deep sorrow, life is but an empty dream, for the soul is dead that slumbers, the meaning of the slumbers, here verse, poems or song, slumber means sleep, here to be inactive. Tell me not in mournful numbers, life is but an empty dream, for the soul is dead that slumbers. Slumbers means inactives. That's slumbers and things are not what they seem. Whatever we think is, that things never occurs according to our seems and all that. It means, it imparts the moral lessons of courage and patience as the most important virtue of our path of self-actualization. Hmm, we should not be slumber. He says that there is a substitute to hard work and hence one must labor endlessly to able to reach the point in life when the threat of death will not bother us because our soul which is immortal would be nourished because of all the work we have done by seizing the day. We come to know in this second stanza. Life is real. Life is earnest. And the grave is not its goal. See, only death is not its goal. Dust thou art, though dust returns, was not spoken of the soul. Which uh, already I have told and discussed. That he says that there is no substitute to hard work. And hence one must labor endlessly to be able to reach the point in life when the threat of death will not bother us because our soul which is immortal. So, and grave is not its goal which would be nourished because of all we work we have done by seizing the day. What a, and those who are, though dust returns, was not spoken of the soul. Next stanza. Not enjoyment and not sorrow is our destined end or way, but to act that is Tomorrow, find us farther than today. The poet says that. <laughs> no enjoyment and not sorrow. While living our day-to-day -day lives, there is, in some times, some moments, enjoy comes. We enjoy. We get the happiness. Some things happen according to our wishes. Sometimes sorrow, sufferings, sadness, we lose. It is our destiny in our way. And is our way that if you go to Momentary pleasures, enjoyment and sorrow, no. This is the shadow. This is the life. But we never mingle in that, in enjoyment as well as in the sorrow. I remember one of the couplet by Tagore's, Give me the stain to make my, uh, give me the stain to bear my joys and the sorrows. He prays to the God, give me the stain to bear my joys as well as sorrows. Hmm, that's why. Which both are the important. But to act that each tomorrow finds us farther than today. 
our duty our task is to act to do work to do karma and that karma should be better than tomorrow so so we must be act that is tomorrow find us farther than today that is our task so it teaches the youth next stanza art is long and time is fleeting and our hearts those torch and brow still like muffled drums are beating for our marches to the grave and he say that art is long as time is fleeting time is also always passing passing rapidly is our destiny in our way and this is not <coughs> sorry and our hearts those stout and brave when we think about the hearts hearts is a strong stout means strong sturdy still like muffled drums muffled drums means drums covered with cloth so that their sound is mad softer to suit the sound meaning of a foreigner and our hearts those stout and brave still like muffled drums are beating funeral marches to the graves so means we are passing the times and day by days so we are not mm, growing up we are going to towards of the last destiny that is death <coughs> in the next stanza in the world's broad field of battles and world is a battle life is a battles in the bra- break of life be not like dumb driven cattle be a hero in the struggle uh he increases increases uh and it is the uh, the important note that how the brevity of the poem believes in profundity mm uh it asks to us to cultivate the soul see the present have a courage and patience levas endlessly get inspired from the best and inspire the coming generation for a few do just mm even though it is a 36 lines the poet managed to inspire the readers of his time and the many generation of that followers and also he makes <coughs> that in the previous uh stanza that our uh, time is fleeting and he makes it clear that life is temporary and short but he makes us full at right about it's by giving us the perfect way to invest it with meaning by beautifying our present and developing the self and the soul it would not be a exaggeration exaggeration to state that the poem is one of the best in occasion piece pin till date the counting popularity of the poem bears testimony to the same anyway in the world's broad field of battles in the break of life be not like a dumb driven cattle be a hero in strife here the poets teaches and, uh, and warns us that the world and the life is the battles in the break of lives the meaning of that uh, break temporary living quarters made for soldiers so uh, uh, life is the like that just la uh, the soldiers when the they uh, well soldiers go on the borders and they make this uh, very temporary quarters like that in the world's broad field of battle in the break of life be not like a dumb drive cattle be a hero in the stripes and uh, uh, play the roles like the hero the stripe means struggle and be not be like a uh, be not like dumb drive and cattle means don't spend the life like animals silent obedient cattle that uh, uh, when we think about the cattle and the, that animals that cattle are obedient they do not assert their will but simply do what they are told to do by their owner so don't spend a life like that things your own ways trust no futures how about pleasant let the dead past bury its dead act act in the living present heart within and god or oh, oh her heart trust no no don't believe in the futures never trust in the futures we don't know what will be going to happens no one knows how about 
however pleasant it may be pleasant or it may be sad what things are going to happen in our lives we don't know let the dead past bury its dead and uh, forget the past don't repent don't waste your times in the past or oh, if i do such and such i would be there don't think about the past act act in the living present try to live try to live in the present in the presently moment heart within and god oh our heart and heart and our heart never lose never you anyone's in the past never go in the past and the future things in the presently that's the message our poet here wanted to give us next line lives of the great man all remind us we can make our lives sublime and departing leave behind us footprints on the sands of time lives of the great men all remind us and when we think about the history when we come out through the lives of the great men the great heroes who have, wow, who have been played the great roles and who had played the great roles they become the immortal so we coming through their um, biography and autobiography we must be get the inspirations from them and our uh, try to make our life better best and we can make our lives sublime like a star and departing leave behind us footprints on the sands of times here footprints of time the leaves we lead cloud because example for others to follow in the futures and uh, when we miss is very important and departing when we leave this stage leave behind us footprints on the sands of time and uh, when we going to leave this stage our roles our uh, personality our life should be become the ideals it become the role for the coming generations as a as a role models footprints that uh, in the next stanza footprints that perhaps another selling over life solomon man a forlorn and shipwrecked brother seeing shall take hurt again and footprints that perhaps another it may be another selling over life solomon mans Solly means mint, dignified and grave in manner of character, grand and um, inspiring. Of inspiring, me our character should be like that. Singing over life, Solly means. Another singing shall take hurt again. Forlorn and shipwreck brother, singing shall take hurt again. In this stanza, the writer suggests footprints that perhaps another selling over life Solomon made a forlorn and shipwrecked brother seeing shall take hurt again. Here, take hurt again means feel more positive and encourage. And let us, and in the last stanza, let us then be of and doing with a heart for any fate. and uh, don't sleep and don't waste the time so let us be again be awake and be of and doing and start your and do your karma and uh, with a heart for any fate still achieving still pursuing learn to labor and to wait and that is important message here the poet gives us still achieving whenever you will not achieve your goals they try to achieve that goals and they still in in their wild times do hard work Hmm. Still pursuing, learn to labor and to wait, and try to learn. Try to learn to work hard and also wait. Wait. That is to wait patient, patiently for the result of one's actions. Then you will uh, reach in your uh, dest destined goal and purpose and aims. So that's messages the poet wanted to give us. And now, friends, a uh, little bit. I talk. I talk. Uh, before going to discuss the university's questions, I talk to you about uh, the central theme of the poems. <clears throat> the major theme of the poem is coffee dream, which is Latin for seize the day. Longfellow thinks that the present holds the key to fulfilling our. transit life and making it worth something (sighs) 
according to him we will get nothing by involving ourselves with our past or present the best way to lead one's life is still fill our days with as much productive activity as possible without wasting our time in merriment or meager sorrows don't waste time is in the happy and also in sorrow the poet asks us frequently in the poem that if we work on our present and develop ourselves and our soul through it we will be able to defeat death the next theme is transience of life is another theme that has been touched upon in the poem the poet says that our time on this planet is finite he makes us aware of this in the fourth stanza when he says when he says that our hearts those stout and brave uh this see the fourth stanza hmm see here the other part say our hearts those stout and brave still like muffled drums are beating for our marches to the grave his aim behind reminding us about the temporal natural nature of life is not to scare us but to inspire us to make the most of our gift of life while it lasts the importance of the soul is another theme that has been touched upon in the poems the poet says that our soul is our ticket to immortality our bodies will go back to the dust it comes from but our soul will live on so we must add meaning to our life by trying to cultivate our soul poet focuses on the souls not the body the power of art is an important thing the poet has hinted in the poem that one of the best way to enrich our lives and soul is by indulging in art art is long time is fleeting this is also important and uh, another point is the courage courage is a recurring theme in the poem the poet does not promises us to a rosy picture of the path that he has prescribed for us he ensure he ensures us that we will face difficulties and obstacles however he also assures us that this hardship and struggles will be easy for us to sail through if we have the virtue of courage optimism strong desire in our hearts so these are the main themes and now uh, a central idea of the poems now friends <coughs> i have given two important questions of the university levels that question may be asked in the coming examination term and examinations and each question goes for 10 marks or in the first semesters for 7 marks you have to write in 150 words answer i did the questions and already i have discussed the answers of that questions while uh, discussing and uh, explaining the poems question what does the poet compare our hearts beats to hoy first question what does the poet compare our heart beats to hoy second the poem talks of death and of the brevity of life would you say that the tone of the poem is pessimistic or not give reasons for your answers which we have seen in the stanza number 4th and the 5th so friends thanks for watching and if you like my youtube channels comment in share it thank you thank you thank you very much